How does your role as team captain change or come more into play as the team moves into the playoffs? Do you find yourself under added pressure to keep the team working as a unit? Uh, I, not necessarily. I mean, it's up to me to make sure that uh, everybody knows their role. And uh, it's actually me and uh, we have a bunch of old guys. So, you know, it's, it makes my job easy. We have so many leader, leaders, leaders in this room. So, uh, you know, we got to make sure that uh, each of the guys know what they're doing. And that's pretty much it. Has the way the season ended, um, dropping the last three games, affected how this team is preparing for the postseason? And what did you learn from those tough losses? Oh, you know, not really. We just, uh, it's not that we played bad. We didn't play with uh, any urgency, I thought. And uh, guys were trying to do too much, which, you know, I mean, we were we clinched and uh, some of the guys deserved to uh, try some uh, crazy stuff out there. But uh, obviously it didn't work out, so it's not really our game. But uh, it's, uh, you know, of course it's, uh, it's a tough way to uh, finish the season, but, uh, you know, at Sunday night, uh, around 10 o'clock that night, we're, uh, we're over it and uh, we're start thinking about uh, this playoff and, you know, that's what matters right now. Generally speaking, what's the focus in the locker room right now? What does this team need to do to mentally prepare for the coming series now that the first uh, postseason puck drop for us is on Friday night? Uh, we just got to go back to what we did uh, so good during the season which was, you know, uh, power, special units, power play and PKs were uh, pretty good at it all season. And uh, we were pretty good defenses. We would play good and we were safe in our zone. And, uh, you know, once we uh, passed the red line, we put uh, a lot of puck on that. And, uh, you know, we crashed on that and we scored some goals. And playoff is all about, you know, putting pucks on that and, uh, you know, paying the price in front. And, you know, you'll get the, the dirty goals and the, the lucky goals, you know, from the corner and all that. They're all good. So, uh you know, it, all the, the little things to gain momentum in the game, that's what uh, it's going to make a big difference. The last time these two teams met was in December. How do you prepare for a series against a team you haven't seen in almost four months? Uh, it's tough. I mean, not only do we haven't seen them for four months, but they pretty much did a whole facelift to their team. So, um, but like any team, you just try to outplay them. Um, you know, you try to learn their tendencies and try to uh, learn some habits, but at the end of the day, um, it doesn't matter who they got dressed, you just got to beat whoever they have out there and just help play them. The physicality demonstrated between these two teams was undeniable. Through four games, we had almost 272 penalty minutes collected. Do you think it will be a different game on the ice now that we're in the postseason, or can we still expect to see such high numbers in the box? Yeah, I don't know. Um, Playoffs, playoffs is, uh, you know, what we strive for all season. Um, so um, guys leave it out there every night, every shift. So I would imagine it's going to be physical. Um, as many penalty minutes, I don't know, I can't see it because obviously, you know, you try to sail the penalty box as much as you can. So um, I don't know, it's kind of yet to be seen, I guess. Uh, we're going to do our best to stay out of the penalty box, um, you know, but we're going to still try to do our best to stay as physical as possible and uh, try to dominate. What's your focus right now? Between now and your first shift on the ice, what do you need to make sure that you're ready out there? Um, you just got to beat your matchup. You know, um, you're going to have uh, guys that you're going to be playing against. Um, you know, each and every night, um, and you just got to be better than the line you're playing against. Um, you know, obviously defense first. Keep the puck out of our net. Keep the puck out of our zone, and uh, you know, uh, let the chips fall where they may. And if you know, if you're putting everything uh, you got into it, and you know, leaving it out there, then, you know, that's all you can do. And at the end of the day, I think that, uh, you know, if we all do that, I think we got the team that um, if we're willing to do that, then it's going to show on the scoreboard at the end of the night. You've been a steady goal scorer throughout the season for the Mavericks, but there's definitely a jump in points in these last few games with eight goals in the last five games. Do you feel like you pushed yourself to make that happen or was the puck just finding you on the ice? Uh, I think just the puck was finding finding the stick, and uh, you know, playing with those uh, two guys, Casty and Sebi, you know, just have to keep your stick on the ice, and uh, you know, the puck was uh, just there for me to put in the net. So besides uh, securing leading goal scorer, you also set a new franchise record for single season goals, tallying your 34th against Quad City on Sunday night. How does it feel to not only set that record for the Mavericks, but to also have doubled your goal production from last year? Uh, you know, it was something that uh, I wanted to. Uh, you know, improve uh, this year. Last year, you know, I was pretty disappointed. I had a, you know, a slow start and uh, an off uh, an off year. But uh, you know, this summer I wanted to, you know, get myself to, you know, to pretty good shape where I could have a, you know, a full year, complete year. And uh, you know, I was happy with uh, the way things went. But uh, you know, 
it's uh, the fun begins now. So moving into the postseason now, you've been through three playoff runs with the Mavericks. What's your role on the team to prepare not only you know your fellow teammates as a whole, but also especially the rookie players in the locker room? Uh, just keep them focused. You know, it's uh, it's pretty easy to get uh, unfocused, but you know what? It's uh, it's a long uh, it's a long you know series, long playoffs. You know, I just have to keep focus and uh, you know you know have a little fun out there too because uh, you know stay focused. You know, you get some confidence and uh, it's. Uh, it's uh, pretty fun here. What's been the focus in preparing for the playoffs this week, given the outcomes of the Mavericks' last few games? And where is this team in terms of mental preparedness, along with being physically up to the task? You know, it's uh, a long, grueling season. The guys went through, and, uh, you know, heading into the playoffs, we, we want to be very prepared for, for the opponent we're playing, but most importantly, just uh, really good and, and comfortable with, with what our game plan is and, and getting sharp and and crisp on on those things. So we spent uh, first portion of the week trying to get the guys rest and recuperated, so they're physically ready to go through a hopefully a long playoff series uh, season, but could be a very physical first playoff series. Uh, secondly, we wanted to really fo hone in on on what we're doing. So we we concentrated about on the Missouri Mavericks and and the things that we've done well throughout the season, or the things we we maybe didn't do so well in the last few games of the year that we need to improve upon. And then thirdly, we looked at the Arizona Sun Dogs and, and the, the types of challenges that, that they may bring to us. But uh, overall, we're real pleased with the week. It was, it was a good week of preparation. I think both mentally and physically, the guys are really ready to go. Now, matching up against the Sun Dogs, we haven't seen them since December. And even then, it was a very different team then than it is now. How do you focus in and prepare for that kind of a matchup when you haven't seen these players really all season? You know, we're, we're really referring to this as the 11th team in the Central Hockey League, uh, the team we haven't seen yet. So uh, obviously we, we've played them, we had some success, but they've added some of their most key pieces uh, later in the season after after we saw them. So guys like David Rutherford and, and Forney are, are so dangerous off offensively. Brandon Cacimilio, uh someone we know very well here, but uh, they've got great goaltending. They, they've got a, a talented group of forwards uh, as talented as any team in this league so they'll be uh, a very tough hockey team to play against and, and uh, again it, we will have to be very very good uh, to come out on top in this series. Besides the Quad City Mallards no other team in the league has made it this far going through this few number of players only 27. What is the what's the difference um, between the rest of the teams and this group of guys and did you have a feeling early on in the season putting them together that this was going to be a group that would stick through the season? You know, really our mindset uh, 12 months ago when, when we started thinking about this season and putting that right group of guys together and, and very meticulous in, in the process of, of selecting our players, even that we brought to camp and then, of course, making tough decisions at camp. And, and we wanted this group together. So we're, we're hoping that now, uh, 66 games later, that, that that'll be part of our advantage, that these guys know each other very well, that they've stuck together through the highs and lows of a season, that these guys uh, know, are very familiar with, with the tendencies of their line mates and, and understand the moods and, and the attitudes of the guys in the locker room. That should be an advantage to us heading into the postseason.